The first thing to notice in this problem is that a U substitution isn't really going to work out. The next thing to notice is that we might be doing a trig sub with this problem because we have a radical and we have an x squared under the radical. And the last thing to notice right off the bat is that we have a negative sign on our x squared. Ultimately, that's going to tip us off that this form is the one that we're going to be talking about in this problem. And it might help us to write this integral in this way first. Notice I just factored a negative out from underneath the square root. Now taking our cue from some previous videos, we're going to complete the square on the x squared minus 4x. To get this x squared minus 4x to be a perfect square, we need to add 4 to it. We could find that 4 just by observation, or we can use the trick where we can take the b term, in this case negative 4, divide it by 2, and then squaring that number. No matter how you get that 4, it's an illegal operation just to add 4 to that expression, so we also need to subtract 4. The first three terms should be a perfect square now, and if we factor those first three terms, we just found that we could rewrite x squared minus 4x as x minus 2, the quantity squared, minus 4. So what we can do is plug that in up here to this integral and if we do that this is what we get and now redistributing that negative sign inside the square root gives us our rewritten integral that looks a lot more like the form of the trigonometric substitution above. All we've done is algebra so far so let's use some calculus now. You'll notice that in this case a equals 2 and instead of x we have x minus 2 in our substitution so we're going to use the substitution x minus 2 equals 2 sine of theta. We can take a derivative to get dx equals 2 cosine theta d theta. And now we can plug all of that into our integral to see what we get. Before we can make that substitution, though, it looks like we also need to solve for x. If we do that, we get x equals 2 sine theta plus 2. OK, now let's replace x squared with 2 sine theta plus 2 squared. Let's replace x minus 2 with 2 sine theta. And let's replace dx with 2 cosine theta. If we just square the 2 sine theta in the denominator, you'll notice that we get 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. And as always, to get rid of the radical in this integrand, we're going to need to use a fundamental trig identity. In this case, if 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta, then 4 minus 4 sine squared theta equals 4 cosine squared theta. Taking a square root of 4 gives us 2. Taking a square root of cosine squared gives us cosine theta. And if we assume that cosine of theta is positive, we can forget about the absolute value that pops up in every one of these problems. And ultimately, we can cancel this entire denominator with these terms right here. That leaves us was just the numerator. And to integrate this, I think we're just going to have to FOIL that term out. This leaves us with three terms. The second and third term we could integrate fairly easily. This first term, though, has a sine squared in it. And whenever integrating something like that, we need to remember our trig identity. Sine squared is 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta. Let's make that substitution and finally do the integration. I'm noticing after making that substitution, we have a 2 and a 4 that we can combine. So I guess we can go ahead and do that. And finally, it looks like we can integrate. The integral of cosine is sine. So this negative is going to stay here. Don't forget that because we have a 2 theta here, we actually have to divide this integral by 2. Technically, that's a u substitution. The integral of sine is negative cosine. And the integral of 6 is just 6 theta. So this is the answer to the problem, except we want our answer in terms of x. To get our answer in terms of x, we need to look back at the original substitution. Dividing it by 2 gets sine of theta by itself. And that allows us to draw ourselves a reference triangle. If our theta happens to look like this, then the sine of that angle, or the opposite divided by the hypotenuse is going to be x minus 2 divided by 2. Doing a quick Pythagorean theorem will give us the length of this side here. Simplifying that is going to give us the familiar term that we saw in the original integral. Now the information that we have right now is going to be enough to rewrite this second term in terms of x using the reference triangle and this third term in terms of x using our original substitution. However, this reference triangle isn't going to work with sine of 2 theta because we have a triangle with just theta in it. What that implies is we actually need to use one more trigger identity in this problem. We can rewrite sine of 2 theta as 2 sine theta cosine theta. Okay, now let's rewrite this one term at a time. We know that sine of theta is x minus 2 over 2. From the triangle, we know that cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, or the square root of 4x minus x squared over 2. Doing that one more time for this cosine, and to rewrite this final theta right here, I need a little bit of room, so let's move that over. We can solve this equation for theta by taking an inverse sine of both sides. Okay, so finally we can rewrite theta. And we have ourselves a pretty good final answer, though it might make sense to simplify this just a little bit. Let's cancel our 2s. Let's cancel this 8 with this 2. And let's neaten things up a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. These trig sub problems are pretty long. But that was a good one. Let me zoom out, and I will scroll through the work so that you can take another look and hit pause whenever you feel like it's necessary.